Welcome to Off the Page, the show where we talk with Colorado authors to get the story behind the story. I'm Stacy McKenzie, a librarian here at Mamie Dowd Eisenhower Public Library in Broomfield. And today we're talking to George Williams, the author of Who Will Care for Them. George, thank you so much for being on the show today. Thank you for inviting me. It's a pleasure to be here. And we're going to talk about your book in just a little bit about adults with autism. But first, I always like to ask my authors, are you a full-time author or do you have another career that you also do? I'm a full-time author at this point. Prior to that, I was in sales. I sold carpiers, office equipment, and prior to that, I operated a business, a senior in handicapped transportation business. Okay, so you had a long career before. Yes. Now you're a full-time author, which is exciting. Do you enjoy that? I, I love it. I love it. I would write. If I had nothing else to do, I would write. Oh, that's fabulous. <laughs> what made you write this particular book? Who will care for them? Well, uh, we have a son who is on the autism spectrum. Uh, he's currently 17 years old. Mm -hmm. But we realized as he was getting older that at some point, someone else would have to assume the role that we were doing. Mm -hmm. Someone would have to take care of his needs as he matured and got older. And I realized that if we were thinking that there must be probably millions of other families having the exact same conversation. So that was my motivation for writing the book. Yes, that's very true. Um, and as you mentioned, millions of parents out there of, of children with autism um, and becoming adults with autism. George, can you share some statistics about children born with autism? Well, births currently, the st statistics are one in 68 children born will likely be diagnosed with autism. Um, the adult statistics is the most glaring has to do with employment. 80% of adults on the spectrum are unemployed and that's a really daunting statistic when you think about it. 80% of young people with so much ability are not working. Wow, so we've got, um, that's not a, a, a statistic that's that's going to go away about about the births. We we know that that's going to continue for a little while till we find a cure. But this issue with adults 80% being unemployed, that's amazing. Yes. Um so what is your book specifically about? My book addresses the issues that adults on the spectrum will face. Uh, for the most part, kids, of course, live with parents and but as they mature and enter adulthood, they leave the nest. Uh, many young people on the spectrum are entering the workplace, they're living independently, but they're encountering a number of challenges. So I address those issues, primarily health care, employment is a major issue. I talk a lot in my book about housing and having housing that suits their needs, mm -hmm. that deals with the sensibility issues mm -hmm. such as lighting and uh, food, uh, mm -hmm. allergies and having trained people in place who can address their, their needs. When we think about autism, we mostly think about children, but we do need to change our mindsets, don't we, and think about adults with autism. We really do, Stacy. We've got to start thinking long-term because life expectancies are increasing. Uh, meanwhile, as the k children young adults mature and move towards middle age, the parents are aging too. And as parents become 70, 75, 80 years old, their middle aged kids at some point will have to live independently. The parents may have health care issues of their own, uh, dementia and Alzheimer's is on the rise. So at some point, parents simply won't be able to take care of their special needs adult children at home. And we know that the statistics of um, children being born with autism is, is on the rise. Now, I'd like to know why resources for adults with autism are so lacking. I, I think we tend to think aut autism is a children's disorder. We hear so much about autistic kids, but they do become adults and they there's no medical uh, indication that they have sh ex shortened lives. They live uh, a normal lifespan and they become adults and there's such a lack of information about adults on the spectrum. I think this is all very new to us. It's working itself. Uh, we're all learning as we go along. Yes. And there just hasn't been anyone addressing adult issues. Uh, and that also was a, a 
motivation for me to write my book. I want to ask you a little bit about autism itself, and they talk about autism as being a spectrum. Yes. Can you explain a little bit about some of the levels on that spectrum? Absolutely. There, there's such a broad spectrum. We, there are people who are extremely intelligent, who, who are even savants or geniuses who are on the spectrum. At the opposite end of the spectrum, we have people with severe deficits and severe limitations, those who may need 24-hour uh, custodial care. But for the most part, most adult people fall somewhere in the middle of that spectrum. They have some limitations uh, and they have an area or areas that they're very gifted in. Mm -hmm. um, I think there's a misconception that all autistic people are savants and that simply isn't true. Most are uh, average intelligent. Mm -hmm. uh, they may have one area in which they excel but they socially are inhibited and just tend to lack social skills. George, sometimes we hear about adults with autism who are put into programs for seniors, sort of like senior daycare programs. Are those a good place for adults with autism? It's not the primary option. It's, I would suggest, if possible, having a daycare program designed specifically for autistic adults. The sensibility issues come into play and seniors in daycare, a lot of times their games, their songs, their sing-alongs, which could really impact a person with autism, the noise level, uh, there may be dietary restrictions, and if there's a therapist or a therapeutic uh, intervention, we're talking people at opposite ends of the spectrum in different seasons of life. So I would separate the two populations if possible. So if somebody really does need uh, more 24-hour care or need a daycare, senior may not be, the senior daycare may not be a good place for them to. That would mingle. not be the best place in my, uh, my estimation. It's not the best choice because there are just so many issues going on with that person uh, that has autism that you won't find or, or limited. Uh, you'll find it on a limited basis with that senior. And senior issues tend to deal with end of life issues, mm -hmm. sometimes palliative care, but we're talking about young people who are vibrant and active and intelligent and engaging. So we have to, we just can't lump them all together. And we often hear the term Asperger's associated mm -hmm. with autism. Tell yes. me a little bit about that distinction. Asperger's is a very high functioning, perhaps the highest uh, Fun, uh, form of autism. It's on the autism spectrum. People with Asperger's tend to live very normal lives with the exception of being socially inhibited. They tend to lack social skills. A lot of times they're socially awkward, but they drive, they work, they uh, uh, do everything that a typical person does in adulthood. And so people who are maybe in the middle of the spectrum and uh, up to the Asperger's range, they would be great in the workforce. Yes. Uh, what types of jobs uh, might be appropriate for, for that group? Right now we're seeing a lot of people gravitating towards the computer industry who are on the spectrum. Software testers is one area that a lot of employers have uh, targeted uh, people with autism for. The danger in that is I, I don't think uh, we can overlook the creative side that so many of these people have. Many of them are budding artists or musicians. Uh, math and accounting tend to be an area that they really excel in because they are able to focus uh -huh. very well uh, and they have exceptional skills. Uh, engineering is another occupational area that uh, people with autism tend to do well in. Now you mentioned your 17-year-old son yes. has autism. Yes. Uh, can I ask you, what, what is he doing right now? What are plans that you've got for him? Well, he's very creative. He's on that creative side oh. and he's looking into a graphic design program, online program. Um, currently he's about to graduate from high school. We've homeschooled him and he's done really well academically. He did very well academically when he was in a regular classroom as well. But there were some social issues and we didn't want him to associate learning with discomfort or learning with being uh, something that was uh, a task. We wanted him to make, wanted him to view learning as an enjoyable experience and homeschooling has really worked out well for us. And 
how was it to homeschool him? Was it hard for you to figure out how to teach? At times, yeah. <laughs> at times it was a learning experience for me and I really had to learn how he interprets new information mm -hmm. and uh, I gave him the latitude to be himself and to process and to learn the way that he's comfortable with and so it was a learning experience for me as well as him. So um, learning how your son learns is how you taught him. That kind of sounds like how it should be for all children. I, I think so because they, we should allow uh, latitude for individual differences uh -huh. and you're right, we all tend to learn differently in a way that we're comfortable with. Especially those that are, are more creative and more visual like Exactly, your son. That's, that's right. Well, that's a very exciting for him. Is he excited about this? Is he, it? He is. He, he really is. He's looking forward to a graphic uh, arts or a graphic design program. Uh, he, we told him you can work on your computer and earn money, so he's excited. That sounds great <laughs> for anybody, doesn't it? That sounds wonderful. Well, let's talk about the other side of this. If I'm an employer and I'm interested in hiring adults with autism, what would be a good place for me to start? Well, I think the first thing is for employers is to give that person the opportunity. Give them an opportunity, approach it with an open mind. And uh, uh, the first thing I would recommend to any employer is to perhaps get some training for someone who has knowledge of autism uh, and how to communicate and how to work and how to train that prospective employee. Can, um, is there training already out there that um, employers could get? There, it, it's limited, Stacy. it's very limited. I'm currently writing a, a training program geared specifically for employers and I want to use that as a complement to my book. But it's for employers and I talk about issues like communication, perhaps extending the training program. A lot of autistic employ employees need a longer training period, but once they get it, they tend to be very dedicated, very loyal, and they make excellent employees. So those are some benefits. Of, oh, absolutely. Of so it's certainly work, worth extending the training program. Very dedicated, hard workers, just yes. like every employer wants. <laughs> George, when should parents of a child with autism or an adult with autism, when should they start making arrangements for the future? I think the sooner the better. The first thing parents need to determine is where will my son or daughter live when I'm no longer around? If they have uh, more severe limitations, who's going to take care of them? The financial aspects is a huge piece of the puzzle. I would recommend a special needs trust or if, if there are siblings in the family, uh, uh, determine which brother or sister will take care of that uh, family member that has special needs. I don't think we can assume, well, one of the, one of somebody in the family will do it. That's not always the case. I think it needs to be designated and actually put in writing, have a life care plan as soon as possible, uh, identifying who's going to do what with regards to living, with regards to employment, with regards to medical issues, if there are any, so that the person that assumes the role of the parent will be uh, well-versed and have as much information as they possibly can. And when is the best time to start this type of planning? If they're siblings, I would say when, when the brothers and sisters are able to understand that uh, your, your brother or sister, your sibling has limitations and they may need help throughout their life. And once I, I, I tell people as soon as possible, uh, there's no set time to start, but the sooner the better. Okay, it makes sense that when the possible siblings are old enough to understand, that's yeah. a really good point. In your book, you do talk about quite a ways into the future, maybe yes. not that far into the future. <laughs> uh, I think the year is 2040 in the 2040, future. 2040, yes. Where do you see adults with autism fitting into the community? I see a number of young people integrating into uh, society, giving back to society. Some that are higher functioning will work jobs uh, full time and they'll be fully integrated in society. Others will perhaps work part time and may need uh, a, a supported living environment 
where they have uh, the medical staff to address their medical issues. There's uh, perhaps a, a, a dietitian to deal with their uh, dietary issues. Uh, ideally, I envision a campus perhaps like an assisted living a situation for seniors now where adults middle age are living together in harmony, they're safe, uh, they have a workstation or uh, employers could contract out for those people. They could actually work on site. Others perhaps will leave home and go out into the workplace. And for those who have uh, uh, more severe limitations, they are supported through therapy and uh, social work and, and they are active and they have an environment that keeps them busy and they're, they're loved and cared for. So they're real, we really need to think of this as, as a long-term situation um, yes. like we do with seniors, but this is a group that is a large part of the population is aging. We need to start thinking long-term about this because it is coming quickly. Very quickly, very quickly. In fact, I recently read a statistic that 50,000 adolescents on the spectrum will turn 18 every year and that's going to happen until a cure is found. So that population is growing, they are maturing, they are, uh, they are actively uh, looking for work. You know, so many of them want to work and for so many of these young people, they just want part-time employment. They don't really need full-time or uh, some can't work full-time because of medical issues, but a part-time job 20, 25 hours a week would just mean the world to them because they are able to feel self-sufficient to earn an income of their own, gives them an incredible feeling of self-worth and it boosts their confidence. Uh, that's where I'd like to see society gravitates towards, where these people can work, they are self as self-sufficient as possible, and they have meaning and purpose in their lives. Well, and just like a job is so central to everyone, this group also uh, feels that s centered need. Yes, yes, very much so, because they have so much ability, mm -hmm. such just as the spectrum is very broad and diverse, their gifts are so diverse as well. Um, the creativity, the, uh, the, the ability to do tasks that other people may become bored with, some of the repetitions that uh, certain occupations require, they, they tend to excel and do very well in those. Yes, and I think that surprises a lot of people. It does. Yes. It really does. In fact, employers, I think, are shocked uh -huh. once they discover the uh, abilities that people on the autism spectrum have and what they can offer to the marketplace, to the workplace, and in turn give back to society. They are really surprised. They don't tend to multitask very well, uh -huh. but once they lock in on a given task, they do it extremely well, and they take pride in doing an excellent job. Well, there's new studies that say multitasking isn't really good for us to do anyway. <laughs> and I'm not a very good multitasker. <laughs> so and so your book will hopefully introduce these ideas to some new employers and make them think outside the box a little bit about what their workforce can be. Yes, absolutely. In fact, uh, there's a chapter dedicated solely to uh, embracing the new workplace, the new uh, welcome to the world of work. Uh, uh, work is changing for all of us. But as people with autism are integrated into the workplace, employers have to view work differently and their workforce differently and they have to support those uh, employees that have special needs. But the investment is, is minimal compared to what they'll get in return. Uh, yes, it's, it sounds like a wonderful idea. I hope that everybody latches onto this and, and goes with it. Let's talk about um, what you do for this cause. And uh, you have a blog. Yes. What types of things do you talk about on your blog? I address some of the health care issues for uh, young adults on the spectrum, but most of my topics are geared toward the long term. It's very complementary to what I talk about in the book. I talk about housing, living independently. Uh, I talk about safety, having a secure and safe environment. Uh, I've addressed issues um, such as family, the family dynamics, 
uh, the misunderstandings and some of the stereotypes that people on the spectrum encounter. Uh, one of the things that I talked about in a very jovial way was uh, a family gathering or a family reunion where the young adult with autism is asked every year, when are you going to get married? <laughs> and what are you doing? And they're speaking, the family members talking to them in a very slow, loud <laughs> voice as though they're deaf. Now, some people with autism may have hearing impairments, but mm -hmm. not all do. Yeah, that's just normal. Yeah, yes. Just think about that. Yeah, I can could, I could laugh at picturing that. And you will speak to groups if asked, so people can contact you through that blog. Yes. And you speak to groups about all the various issues concerning um, autism and yes. adults with autism. Exactly. Have you spoken to anybody lately that's been... Uh, uh, informally, but n uh, not a formal setting. I've had uh, two book signings, then they that was so much fun because you know as I as I talk to people, everybody knows someone with autism, mm -hmm. either a family member or someone in the community mm -hmm. or the kid at school. Mm -hmm. But everybody can relate to the topic. Now, most people are touched somewhere in their family by someone with autism. But if someone doesn't have that connection, what can I do for someone or a family that's got this issue? I think the, the greatest thing anyone could do uh, for a family with an autistic member is to offer support and encouragement to let them know that they're not alone because the journey can be lonesome. It, it can be very isolated, you feel isolated at times, to let them know that there's a very broad community of like-minded people who are who are going through some of the same challenges and same struggles that they are and if they need resources to try to plug them into those resources so that they won't feel so isolated. Now we talked about this a little bit before but I want to talk more about the writing project that you're doing now uh, about autism. Tell me more about that. Sure. I, I'm writing a training program geared towards employers, towards companies and it's specifically for HR people, for business owners, who might consider hiring a young person with autism who, who's on the spectrum. What to look for, how to train them, how to communicate, maybe modify the work environment, and typically it may be a simple adjustment. Uh, they may just have to change the light bulbs, put in low density lighting, or maybe uh, have some soundproof or a soundproof area for that person to work in and realize that they don't tend to do very well multitasking, there's that word again, mm -hmm. but that train them and let them, because they tend to like routine, they tend to like predictability and know that if they are put in a, in a situation where they have a job to do, if they are properly trained, they will commit, they'll be very dedicated, they're very loyal, and they, they just make excellent employees. Is there much literature ab about that type of thing out there? Very little, Stacy. Yeah. very little, because again, the, the focus has been on children. Most of the literature, most that's out there currently, focuses on kids, and that's very, I think that's excellent. But they do grow up, and things tend to, the support programs in after high school or age 21, mm -hmm. typically. So uh, these young adults are pretty much on their own, them and their families. Um, so I wanted to write this book and make this available to anyone that's interested. And I hope uh, it will be a great benefit for the community. Well, George, thank you so much for writing this book. Thank you in advance for writing the training manual that you're writing for employers who are going to want these, these hardworking, dedicated, loyal employers into their workforce. And thank you again so much for being on the show. Well, thank you. It, it's a pleasure to be here, and I enjoy sharing about autism, and it's it's just been fun. I'd like to thank the author that I had on today's show, George D. Williams, Who Will Care For Them is the name of his book. Check your local library for this book that we've talked about on today's show, and join us for more next time on Off the Page.